Welcome to Transformations with Tara. And I'm Tara Sutphin. And my guest today is Rebecca Whitman. And she is Magnetic Abundance. And she has written a wonderful book. And we're going to talk about it. And we're going to um, talk about the seven pillars of success. And I have Jason McKean. And he is the voice of over a million ohms throughout the world. He has a big line of uh, ohm CDs and ohm meditations. And he is the ohm tarot wizard, <clears throat> which is classes in Japan and all over America. Welcome, Jason. Yeah. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Tara. And, and uh, hi, Rebecca. Hi, Glad to, uh, to see you today. Great so we're to gonna see talk. you guys. Hi, Tara. So excited to be here. I had so much fun meeting Tara at a networking event, and I just felt mm -hmm. a connection with her right away. So I'm excited to continue the conversation. Yeah, it was really fun. Actually, I wanted to talk to you about like that trip you just took and everything, but I don't know if we'll we'll talk about it on the air unless you want to. But sure, uh, it's I'm an open book. Ask me anything. <laughs> okay. And it's part of the magnetic abundance, right? To be able yeah. to to have such great uh, places that you see in the world and get new ideas and, and uh, gain, uh, gain a footing of what magnetic abundance is. So tell us, how did you get into magnetic abundance, Rebecca? Yeah, well, it's something that I did not think I would be talking about on a podcast. I'm so delightfully surprised and humbled that USA Today ranked me top five entrepreneurs to watch in 2024 because I didn't even think I'd be doing this line of work. I actually moved to LA 23 years ago to become an actress. And although I had small parts on huge shows like Friends, CSI, and 24, I didn't catch a big break. So I found myself working at children's acting schools, which I really enjoyed because I don't have kids and it's so much fun to help kids with their performing arts goals. And while the kids were off at school, I would study with great spiritual teachers like Michael Beckwith, Esther Hicks, Louise Hay, Wayne Dyer. And I really started applying the law of attraction to my job at the kids acting school. And before I knew it, I was making six figures working part time. I didn't apply it so well to my love life. And I had the habit of choosing emotionally unavailable narcissistic men. I married one, just sure I would change him. And we all know how that story turns out. Uh, three years later, I filed for divorce painfully. Mm -hmm. And as my marriage was slowly unraveling, my dad was slowly dying. And I would fly back and forth from LA to Cincinnati, Ohio, where I grew up. And I didn't know which conversation with my dad would be the last. He said, you know, you should write a book. The way you're living life is really interesting. And I think you should share people share it with people. So a few months later, my dad had passed my marriage was dissolved and I was sitting across the desk for my financial planner. And he said, Rebecca, you lost your marriage and your dad. And you had to spend a ton of money on attorneys and a settlement out of court and all this stuff, but yet you became a self made millionaire this year. And I think you should teach people what you did to be so resilient. So that's what led to the book, How to Make a Six-Figure Income Working Part-Time, which led to coaching women on how to go from burned out and overwhelmed to balanced, beautiful, and abundant. And now I teach women all over the world. I teach one-on-one -on -one groups, and I lead international retreats, helping people, not just women, attract magnetic abundance in their life so they can find more joy and freedom. Right. I mean, yeah, because I mean, here it is. I mean, your dad's dying and your marriage is dissolving. I mean, you know, most people crumble under all that. It's pretty, it's pretty rough. You know, they don't get up to make money usually. So you do have yeah. some magic there that you need to help yeah. others to learn <laughs> for sure. Definitely. For sure. And it was those two areas of my life were very unmanageable and painful, but I focused on what I could control, which were my daily habits, like a morning practice, meditation, journaling, exercising, having very um, social, a lot of social visits with friends that could hold me up. 
different things that I explain in the book about how how to be resilient no matter what life throws at you and and these are these are the things that carried me through and because I had to really do such a, a deep dive into my prayer and meditation and socializing and exercising I really surrendered and that's why I think I ended up making more money than I ever made that year because I had to really like surrender to the universe that year because everything was so unmanageable yeah interesting i mean it is it's an interesting process that you that you really found the pathway because a lot of people don't find that pathway during those times yeah thank yeah. you yeah it is the uh, the pillars that you speak of you know uh what what's uh what's the first pillar where, where does one begin Sure, the pillars are in order of importance, in my opinion, and how to build a balanced, beautiful and abundant life. So it starts with spirituality. And I know you guys are both master practitioners in that arena. Uh, to me, having that reliance on the divine is what carries you through and helps you live life in a flow state where you can actually enjoy life and not be you know full of stress of trying to control and manage every little detail because there's so much going on in life right now it's so busy so having that morning practice is really important and i met a woman when i was a teenager at a 12-step meeting her name was janet i really think she was an angel because she sat down next to me and she said i'm going to show you how to write in a God journal. And she gave me these life-changing journal prompts, which I immediately started using. A few years later, I added a few here and there, and now I call it my abundance journal. And what it helps you do is turn negative situations into positive learning experiences. It's a great tool for reframing. It's a great tool for celebrating your wins, acknowledging other people's wins so you can learn from others. And I'm actually going to give this as a gift to your listeners at the end of the show. So be sure you all listen uh, till the end of the show, because this has been the number one tool for developing a relationship with spirit in my life. So having that morning practice is the first pillar. The second pillar is exercise. So important to take care of the body. I'm really big on exercising, supplements, hydration, all things health and wellness. Um, the next pillar is emotions. I believe that all emotions come from fear or love, or you could say scarcity or abundance. Mm -hmm. There's either not enough of what you think you want, or there's more than enough. And if we can switch our mindset from scarcity to abundance, we can start magnetizing more of what we want. The next pillar is romantic, having a romantic partner that enhances your life and makes you your energy amplify is so important. You know, our auric field is 30 feet. So the person who's spending the night with you is definitely affecting your aura. So mm -hmm. having that loving presence is so important. I think it's actually better to be alone than with somebody who's negative or toxic. Mm -hmm. um, the next pillar after romance is mental. And that is continuing to learn. So learning from Jason and his awesome tarot teaching or learning from Tara in this awesome podcast and all her different ways that she does readings and teaches people about life and themselves. So continuing to learn as mental. The next one is social and that is community. We are very lonely right now. There's a mental uh, yeah. wellness epidemic of loneliness, suicide, depression, anxiety. So mm -hmm. having community, having like-minded people, like the people who listen to this show and the people in your yoga class, your church, your temple, your 12-step meetings, just to lift you up and carry you through life. And then finally, financial. And everybody thinks magnetic abundance means money, but actually money is the last piece of the puzzle to come into place because when you have friends and love and you're healthy and you're spiritually connected, then money comes in easily. But if you just focus on money, 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 and ignore your health and ignore your love life and ignore your friends and ignore your, ignore your relationship with the divine, then you can become really sick. And money is the last piece of the puzzle to click into place. And those are the seven pillars. I love it. I love it. They're wonderful. 
Right? Yeah, it's well well rounded. Covers mm -hmm. all of the all of the bases, mm -hmm. which is that's a, that's what makes them pillars, I guess, because they're they're holding everything up. <laughs> that's right. They're holding your. They're like the seven spokes of a bicycle wheel. If one is broken, the wheel doesn't work. They all are very interconnected, and they all work together. Yeah. Does uh, do, do you find that that the people that you work with that there is a a, a a common beginning point as far as uh, for for most people as far as or or do you steer them to again kind of that that first spoke or the first pillar that that spiritual one so that they are getting in touch with their their own core their own passions their their own um, motivations. Well, people usually hire me because they're stuck in one of the areas or more. So in order to get them unstuck, I teach them a framework called the four A's of transformation. The first A is an awareness of where they're stuck an awareness of their old pattern and old story. So let's say, for example, that somebody is hiring me because they want to manifest their soulmate. You know, one of my courses is how to manifest your soulmate in midlife mm -hmm. and they are stuck. They keep dating the same guy over and over and over again. He just changes clothes and addresses, but he's the same type of person. That's what happened to me. Mm -hmm. um, maybe they have an old story, like all the good ones are already taken. I'm too old. Yeah, I, yeah, I hear that one all the time. Yeah, I'm unlucky in love. Uh, my picker's broken. Whatever their old story is, we talk about that. We bring it to the surface because a lot of people don't even know what their old story is. They're not aware of the words that they say and how their words manifest. So the first A is awareness. The second A is acceptance, not to judge, not to say, oh, I've had so many classes with Jason and readings with Tara. I should know better. I shouldn't be saying all the good ones are already taken. I've studied the law of attraction and beat yourself up. No, no, no. Accept it. Okay. I just realized I have this old belief, this old story that all the good ones are already taken. So the next A is acceptance. The next A after that is action. So what action are you willing to take to get a different result? You know, maybe you are willing to go on one internet date a week. Maybe you are willing to break up with that old boyfriend that fits like an old pair of outdated jeans. You know, it fits comfortably, but it's outdated and not working anymore. So what action are you willing to take to change this old habit? And then the final A is an affirmation. And that's kind of like the magic fairy dust that I throw on. I flip the old belief into an affirmation. So if the old belief is all the good ones are already taken, we flip that into an affirmation, like there are more than enough choices to find my soulmate. I have so many options, you know, whatever the opposite of the old belief is that resonates with the client. And then every time that old belief comes up where they think all the good ones are already taken, mm -hmm. then they will say, I have so many choices of potential soulmates. So that is kind of how you rewire some old patterns and you can do that literally with all seven pillars of abundance because usually somebody has a limiting belief or an old story in each of the seven pillars on why they can't get it to a level 10. Yes. Yeah. I know. And it, it and it just goes round and round and round. Yeah. Especially that love thing and the money thing and the health health is, as well. And the health thing. Yeah. Those are the three areas where people tend to get stuck. Mm -hmm. Really stuck. So yeah. And the thing, uh, you know, because people don't want to eat an apple, they don't want to eat a, uh, even one little uh, blade of lettuce. <laughs> yeah. The Cheetos, you know, taste so much better, but uh, Cheetos have no nutritional value. Right. <laughs> None. It's about training yourself to actually like the healthy things, the healthy food, the healthy people, you mm -hmm. know, the healthy work situations, because we get trained based on our childhood to be comfortable in the familiar, right? Family mm -hmm. are familiar. So it's about breaking out of those old stories and old paradigms into the next best version of yourself. 
Yes. Beautiful. That is beautiful. So, so, um, so you have a book. Let's talk about your book. Yeah. yeah. So the book, um, has seven the seven pillars of abundance i know i'm on a virtual screen seven pillars yeah. of abundance and the cool thing is after each chapter because i'm such a big believer in affirmations i give you if you're stuck in that area even if you don't hire me as a one-on-one -on -one or group coach or go to my retreat you can get three affirmations to get you unstuck so after each chapter there's three affirmations so for example spirituality um, I am a spiritual being having a human experience. Mm -hmm. I have a connection to the divine that gives me peace and ease. I am able to go with the flow and know that everything works out for me. So after, so you'll get 21 affirmations that are life-changing. Plus in each chapter, I give you practical tips, tools, and strategies on how to have a breakthrough in one of these seven pillars. Very nice. Yeah. And, so, and sometimes I feel that, you know, like, because I am around a lot of spiritual people is that, you know, uh, the spiritual people I need to bring back down to earth that you live in earth life. And so <laughs> to actually source on creating what is really great upon the earth. And that is, you know, great food, great experiences, great love, great, um, you know, uh, uh, money and security and you know and then with the people who are too earth-based is to help them you know really release the gravity off their body to experience you know a jo more joyful uh amazing uh experience of of knowing that you know the vibrancy of everything is just there to is all around you and if you tap into it it's just much more fun than just thinking about money or or being anxious about what what's what's in it for me yeah <laughs> yeah I mean it's it's such a balance because if you're just in your spiritual life which is just the first pillar then you're out of balance right you're just yeah. focused on your relationship with the divine and you're missing out on the sensuality of life mm -hmm. <laughs> food, the fabric, the music, the, the beautiful artwork, you know, all five senses. So a great way to get people out of their uh, ethereal world into their body is to get in touch with your five senses. You know, what are you seeing? What are you smelling? What are you tasting? What are you touching? And how can you really enjoy that and be present in the moment? And we are spiritual beings having a human experience. We're going to be spiritual beings forever. So we might as well enjoy our human experience while we're here. And it, you know, one of my favorite spiritual teachers, I think, it, I don't remember, you guys might know, you guys are such students of uh, spirituality, but I think it's a bug of a Gita or something, mm -hmm. but it says that the rarity of a soul having a human incarnation is like a turtle putting its nose through an inner tube in the middle of the ocean. Like there's so many souls out there that would just love to be in a body and have this human incarnation. It's so rare and such a great opportunity to be here and to really appreciate being here and all the beauty that comes with being on the earth and having a body and, and all of that. Yeah. Well, I just wrote a book called Soul Writers where I asked three spirits who I knew very, very well in life and they were very pro prolific two were a uh, huge um you know metaphysical authors and um and one was a, a wonderful healer from ireland and oh, um, cool. yeah yeah you were just in ireland i know anyway so the thing is is that um uh it it's 87 questions about the other side and so oh. it, it is it's about you know we're so lucky to have a body and to yeah. experience the life. And so they, you know, they, they basically, they tell us all, all about that in their way. And it, and it was, it's fun because uh, since I'm so uh, prolific in automatic writing, you know, it's really great to hear Jess Stern talk about, you know, who's a great author, wrote Yoga, Youth and Reincarnation in 1965. It was on the New York bestseller list. Um, one of the real forerunners of Eastern thought in the Western world. And um, 
you know, I, I feel that it's, it's just so fun to hear their, their um, talking about things because they studied it on earth. And now I'm trying to get them to talk about it on the other side to tell us. So that was maybe my role all the time just to be here. <laughs> Who were the three uh, great teachers that you channeled? Um, Jess Stern. Mm -hmm. And he, he made Edgar Casey famous, um, with the sleeping prophet, the book, the sleeping prophet and Yogi youth and reincarnation. Um, and a lot of other bestsellers he, he had, and then, um, uh, Dick Sutphin and who I was married to for 32 years. <laughs> and then we have, um, uh, Patrick Smith and he wrote, uh, you were born again to be together and um, we wrote Soul Agreements and some other books. He was, they were well, you know, well liked in the world. And, um, and then uh, the Irish, the Irish seer was Patrick Smith. And we met him in Ireland and um, knew wow. him quite well. He married a friend of ours. And um, so he, he, he's the uh, third person in my spirit guide. She orchestrates all of it. Oh, that sounds amazing. I want to read the book. Yeah, it's kind of, it's a fun book. Everybody's liked it so far that's yeah. been reading it. So it's been fun that way. Very yeah. informative. You know, it's it's like having that perspective from the the other side, from, uh, you know, people who know how to to speak and communicate, really, because they're, they're professional writers. It's yeah. very concise. Yeah. You know? But their, their voices come through it very, very strong. You know, so I, I knew them all too. And I'm going, yep. That that is exactly that person, <laughs> right? Right. It's, it's yeah, it's fun. The yeah, I just writer. let them go. You know, I just say, okay. They just use my hands. They can, you know, they can write whatever they want, talk about what they whatever they want. Wow. Where is your book available, Rebecca? My book is available on Amazon and Audible. Okay. Yeah. Right. Awesome. Did Did you enjoy? Did you do the uh, the the voice uh, reading it? I read it. Yeah, I did. did it was uh, enjoyable, but also very meticulous because uh, if you like smack your gums, or if there's you know the mic hits your shirt, or I mean, then then they had to re-record. So it was a it was a two day process sitting in a tiny little studio. I enjoyed reading it because I. Believe it or not, I don't, I didn't proofread my book. I hired someone else. Like it was like giving birth. I, I channeled it, put it on the paper and then I was done. I, I'm a huge believer of uh, done is better than perfect. And mm -hmm. I'm a recovering perfectionist. So today I strive for imperfection. Mm -hmm. So I didn't want to be that person who went over the book over and over again. So Very I just good. got it done hired an editor. So reading it out loud, I was like, oh, wow, this is actually pretty good. <laughs> I really enjoyed it. <laughs> Did you add that? Yeah. Did you go, oh, wow. I, I can't <laughs> believe I wrote that. That's really good for you listening out there. Right. It's like, right. really pay attention to this part because I, I was I was hitting the nail on the head here. <laughs> I was like yeah. that too. I mean, I, I just thought I was just such a, a a non-writer and I got sucked into it very early. I started writing. I had a friend who was a, a editor of um, New York magazines and every magazine she was involved with like Woman's Own and American Woman and Elle magazine. And, and uh, I, I think she was on Cosmo for a little bit. Anyway, she would have me do all these articles on right. numerology, astrology, um, uh, handwriting analysis you name it you know I would do them for her. and so I you know I had to like get some get my writing ability up and it was it was tough and so then when I started my column I did uh cause and effect which was in 1991 I did uh I if you had a question I would my spirit guide would would um either bring in someone who loves you very much or your spirit guide and they would talk they would write through my hand and answer your questions. And so that became very popular for, well, it's still popular, but, you know, became really popular when I was doing it. And um, they, all questions came in all over the world. And um, 
so so yeah that channeled information it got real easy so I just started really trusting what I started putting down on paper and then now I've done the moon articles for 20 years so you know I've uh I do all the phases of the moon you know talk about them especially the full moon yeah I see the moon behind you that's a that's yeah. a beautiful painting I I think I'm going to have you analyze my handwriting because my handwriting is kind of like crazy. It's very sloppy. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe you're thinking you're going, you're thinking all over the place, maybe. Hmm. Yeah, I'm, I'm, uh, I can, I can neaten it up, but I think it's like very juvenile handwriting. Like it looks like a teenager kid. Well, handwriting. I, I'm just going to remind you that you're not, you're trying not to do perfection. Yes, I'm. I'm definitely living that in my handwriting. So. Right. <laughs> but because but do really you cool. write? Do you write a lot though? I mean, because yeah. these yeah. days it's like you know a lot of us are People kind typing. of typing stuff out. I do because my journal is my biggest connection to the divine that mm -hmm. I do every day. The gift that I want to give your listeners, the abundance journal. So I I write in that every day, and I also have an old fashioned planner where I actually write my to-do list out so uh All right. i do that's write that's yeah awesome. that's good i know they don't even teach it in school anymore writing they don't teach and i want to write thank you notes i bought a huge box of thank you cards on amazon with an intention of writing more thank you notes than i don't do it but uh, i think uh getting a handwritten thank you note is so oh, rare God. and such a nice thing to do for people it really really it. lifts them up so it's so old school it's it so is. beautiful i love it <laughs> yeah love it is it is wonderful yeah. uh, to get a, a handwritten note mm -hmm. it's like oh my god people can write you know yeah it would be nice like a, maybe even for for you and one of your sessions uh in your seminars uh to do a uh, thank people with little thank you notes you know, what, what do they, what do you bring into my life? You know, because I, yeah. I have a friend who's dying. Um, well, I mean, she, she has a, a rare form of cancer and she's written me a thank you note recently. I said, you know, so it was a really beautiful thing is when, you know, you get these little, and she does it through the internet too, but you know, that handwritten note was like amazing. Yeah. I think saying thank you is just, I think that if you only had one prayer to say to the universe, it would be thank you because when you're in gratitude and thanks, then the universe just keeps giving you more. So I love, I love the word thank you to say that after your affirmations really, I feel like makes them go out to the universe and broadcast. Right. And to mean it, you know, because so, yeah. so many people are so anxious these days, they don't realize that, you know, you have to get into the grace of saying thank you, that it's mm -hmm. a, you know, it's a, it's really um, an empowerment. It empowers you when you, so you go into the graciousness of where you are and what you're doing, what journey you've been through, because, you know, not everybody's journey is not easy. So everybody has something they have to do, they're dealing with you know yeah yeah so so rebecca how how might you like this this idea of gratitude right this practice of gratitude because when when we speak of abundance it's it's seems like it's the uh, another aspect of abundance right because we can be in a place of like well i want this i need this i want 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 need 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 right looking for that abundance but to to be in a place of gratitude for what you are given what you acquire you know what what comes in right that that is like uh it, it feels like the the essence of like the, the the spiritual connection with what it is that you're you're looking to to bring in um how how, how is it that that you feel that that gratitude is is a part of the equation there i think the Buddha saying is happiness is not getting what you want, but wanting what you have. And when you want what you have, then you get more of it. It's like when you focus on the lack and the wanting, the universe thinks of you as someone who's lacking and wanting and you get more lack. If you focus on 
the gratitude and being so happy for everything you already have, then you become magnetic and you can draw more of what you want in. So there's always something to be grateful for, even if it's as basic as 10 fingers and 10 toes, four limbs, your next breath, food and shelter, the Wi-Fi that you're listening to this podcast on, the car that you drive, um, just being on the planet, like we talked about earlier, uh, having food to eat, air to breathe, water to drink, indoor plumbing, like getting so basic with your gratitude is something that is another way to start amplifying your abundance. Mm -hmm. it, it feels like uh, part of, of what you can like bring to people too is, is that awareness, that understanding of, of like getting down to a uh, like the foundations too, you know, because what, what you just spoke of is, is like, it, it is the, um it, it's it is the foundation of of like everything else that we build on in the world it's like we have to have you know health we ha we have to have our health to be able to um uh do anything right where where we're like feeling good because if we're not feeling good then it, you know we can have the the biggest dreams in the world but we're not going to pursue them because we don't feel good and so exercise, making sure that, uh, you know, our, our physical being that we're sustaining it, that we're eating, eating right, nutritionally, you know, I think we we're talking about Cheetos earlier, and, and we, we probably won't get the, the Frito-Lay endorsement of the program. We're not getting the Frito-Lay. You know? <laughs> but that's okay, because, <laughs> you know, we do, we do want to promote, like, uh, you know, the, the sustainment of of uh, of well-being mm -hmm. yeah it's like it's like my uh coffee here it's not coffee it's a it's a little matcha latte but i just started to make a matcha latte this morning and i thought you know because like, it'd be kind of fun to have one and it was like well i don't really know how to make it and so i started making it and it was like well you know i need to put a little bit of um super green in it and then i put in you know, black cumin and coriander. And you know, I started just putting all sorts of stuff in. So that's what I'm drinking. And so it's no it's longer a matcha. Drink. No, <laughs> it's, it's like a, a drink. Yeah. And so it's just hilarious. Concoction. You know, I just can't get away from like, oh, no, it can't be that. It has to be, you know, I have to make it healthy. Yeah. That's yeah, so you go the other way. <laughs> yeah, you, but no, that's, that's why you're glowing. I like making, you know, healthy concoctions too. So, yeah. Um, yeah, but it's it is getting really basic with your gratitude because how you start the journey determines the journey you have. So if you start the journey and you're not grateful, if you're in anxiety and depression and you're wanting to fill the God sized hole in your heart with getting the big house or the big career, or the soulmate, when you get it, you're not going to be happy because happiness is a decision happiness is an inside job nothing on the outside is going to fix you mm -hmm. so how you start the journey determines the type of journey you have and and to me the whole point of life is you know to be of happy and joyous service and not to be so self-obsessed that you're always thinking of your your acquisition and your dream, but to enjoy the journey because we never know when our departure date is and we want to make the most of every day that we're here. Mm -hmm. It's true. Yeah. Cause you just never know. Cause I, it is like, what is it that you want to do because that you keep putting off, you know, yes. like that trip to Ireland that you just took. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, you know, I'm, my interest is peaked. What, what happened? with Ireland? Oh, um, I just got it. back there. I, I actually had a vision of traveling the world with my soulmate. And I married my soulmate Ben on 12 21 21 at 12 21 p.m. because I am all about alignment. That's why I love it. Get your life aligned in these seven areas. Um, and my vision was to travel the world with him. And we've only been married now for just over two years. And We've already gone to Fiji, Mexico, Portugal, Spain, and now Ireland. And we're going to- Did you just say only? We've only been there? That's a lot of places so far. That is a lot. <laughs> we're going to keep 
We're going to keep going. And it's so funny because uh, my first husband had tremendous anxiety. I didn't even ask him if he liked to travel oh, boy. before I married him. And I had this vision. He's like, I actually hate to travel. I have extreme anxiety getting on planes and like going through the security line and all this stuff. So I was like, wow, this is really going to be tough. I guess I have to travel the world alone or with friends because I have wanderlust. I want to like see the earth while I'm here on it. And uh, it's so great that I'm living this vision now with my current husband. Yes. Nice. So where are you going to go next? Um, that's a great question. He asked me that on the way back from Ireland on the plane. I'm like, I don't know. I'm still assimilating. Actually, next is I'm going to Belize because mm -hmm. I'm hosting an international women's retreat there. It's a luxury wellness retreat where we're going to be doing a deep dive into these seven pillars and really helping women level up in all these areas of life. And there's going to be yoga and sound bath and a beautiful ceremony in front of a waterfall. So uh, Belize, I'll be going there in October. October. Okay. So how can they find you to sign up for the uh, Belize seminar? Yes. Well, I'm going to share my link tree with uh, you in the show notes. Everything to do with me is in my link tree, my website, my podcast. Um, I have three openings this month for a complimentary coaching call. Um, they go very quickly. So if you feel called, definitely make sure you snag one of those three spots. So it's all on my link tree. Okay. In your link tree and through Instagram. Um, no, you can share it in the show notes, but my link oh, okay. tree is also, uh, in my Instagram link and in bio. Yeah. If you go to my Instagram at Rebecca E. Whitman, it is my oh. link and bio as well. <laughs> That's fantastic. You know, do, do you like uh, in, incorporate like a uh, Kundalini activation uh, as well in, in, uh, you know, your, your workshops? We, I, I just did a, uh, an abundance um uh, it was it was like a a combination tarot and in kundalini activation uh event for it was it was live we've done it uh, online as well because it works online but uh you know to to kind of get the energies moving right for people to to clear stuff out to make room for the next you know what what it is that they're they're looking to bring and that in. So sounded I, like a really cool that um, sounds really cool um, i want to go <laughs> yeah, we don't do kundalini yoga, but I am I am definitely a big believer in movement and moving the energy in your body and changing your physical state definitely makes you more open for breakthroughs and change. Yeah. Yeah, so sometimes it, it's uh, like this this particular one, it wasn't the yoga, it was just a an, an activation, a, a kundalini yeah. activation. Uh, my my friend, colleague, Alaire, she she like did that part of it. I did the the integration afterwards, oh, where it, it allows for people to share their experience, and then with the the tarot, which helps bring awareness about you know what what the blocks are. You know, if if we're like uh, have the mental blocks or the the spiritual blocks you know to to come into a, that place of, of awareness where we can start working on on switching things up you know changing it up so that we're not just uh on rinse and repeat just doing the same patterns over and over that we're really looking to um you know go for the the next level in, in our life that sounds amazing the next time you do the workshop let me know <laughs> i'd love to i'd love to attend um, I love the tarot. It's so funny because right when I graduated uh, from Princeton, I moved to New York City and I took a tarot class and I wanted to be, this was trendy then in the mid nineties when I graduated mm -hmm. college, I wanted to be that girl in like the cute cafes in the West Village going up to people asking, can I give you a reading? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <But> I, <laughs> I love it. I got distracted uh, with other things with acting and then eventually uh, sales, but yeah, I really uh, admire the Tarot. It's such a great methodology to teach and to help people with. Yeah, to, to cultivate awareness, you know, and, and again, yeah. that that full being, the the holistic approach to it, you know, it's like um, in my you know experience, you know, working with Tara and, uh, you know, for for years and years and years, it's like, you know, it's it's like you 
become aware of like the the full being the the spiritual being the the physical being all all of that wisdom you know comes to the fore in it and um you know so it's 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 helpful you know to to people so that they they can get to the next level yeah yeah it's very interesting that you guys are brothers brother and sister and you're both psychic so mm -hmm. Like what happened when you guys were growing up? Like who realized first that they had like this Tara. amazing intuition? <laughs> I'm the yeah. Yeah, the whole family now is into psychic stuff. But yeah, Jason really I yeah, I um I taught a um a boot camp, a psychic boot camp. And so he was part of the boot camp. And um yeah, so the Tarot, he he was really good at it. You know, I, I see what um, modality you're really good at. So I, I really pushed him for that one. And so he took off with it. It was great. Well, wow, that's so great cool. to watch. It's now been 10 years, 11 years. It, it's I've been doing it pro professionally for 10 years or yeah. so. Yeah. It's like prior, I was a, an artist, a musician, you know, so I've always been a, a sensitive, you know, individual. Very accomplished artist. And, and and also, you know, it's like I've always been interested in that which runs deeper, you know, not just the superficial, but, you know, psychology, philosophy, all these things. And I get to use it every day now. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Well, and it's like those curtains behind him, you know, Oz stepped out in front of the curtain, you know, because he was the, the a, wizard. He was amazing behind <laughs> the scenes. And, you know, producing great meditations, the ohm, uh, you know, like it's um, over a million sell, seller out there. Yeah. Know, the ohm recordings. And, you know, you think, oh, but he came in to share himself even more. So it's. Yeah, you, know, you, you look like a wizard. Yeah. 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 No, I, I am. I, I'm, I have the beard and everything. <laughs> <laughs> you look like a wizard. <laughs> yeah. So, um, again, Rebecca, Rebecca Whitman, right? Your book title is how to, how to make a six figure income. Um, yeah. What was it? How to make a six figure Online. income working part time. In part time. And that's yeah. available on Amazon. Uh and and where else? Audible. I read uh, it in my Audible. Audible. That's yeah. right. That's right. Yeah, you've got a great voice too. So it's oh, like thank you. Yeah. And so your podcasts and everything. So yeah. so yeah, you can find Rebecca on, you know, uh, so all social media platforms and is it underneath your name most of the time? Yep, it's all under my name, uh, Twitter, now called X, Clubhouse, um, Instagram, Rebecca E. Whitman. You can also find me on LinkedIn and Facebook under Rebecca Whitman, but just Google me. I'm very easy to find, and I'd love to stay in touch with you guys. And uh, like I said, as a gift, I'd love to gift your listeners with this Abundance Journal, which has been the number one tool in my transformation, and I will make a promise to your listeners. If you write in it every day for 10 days, you will experience a miracle or a shift in your life. in one of these seven areas, I've seen this happen for thousands of people. And I would love to have you guys do that challenge. I'm also really excited about this retreat in Belize. So if anybody is listening to this podcast before April 15th, you will get a $200 discount off the retreat in Belize. So it's all in my link tree and uh, really excited to stay in touch with you guys. And I love what you guys are, are putting out there. I want to like, you know, get a reading now, like, let's go. <laughs> I know. And I want to attend <laughs> your stop and let's wanna... attend Jason's activation <laughs> yeah i'm like okay like come on pull a card for me jason tara like which spiritual spiritual guides are hanging out around me like i right. want to know what you're picking up so uh <laughs> yeah we'll have to you know when we hit stop i am going to be asking you guys a couple quick questions <laughs> <laughs> well we should we should thank you everybody for coming and joining us on the show you can find me at terrainsight.com and jason at jason d mckean dot com and that's j-a-s-o-n d 
as in Dragon Lord. <laughs> McKean. McKean, M C K E A N. Thank you. Dot com. Okay. <clears throat> Lots of love, everybody. <clears throat> Bye. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to stop recording.